Right everyone, welcome back to here. Right, I'm going to make a deer foot bowie knife today. So this is the basic the design. I'll show you it properly in a second. As you can see it pretty well there. Big old deer foot and I'll show you what I'm going to use. So before I go any further, this will be a no forge build as well. So I can show you how to make a knife like this without having a forge. Very basic tools. And some of the tools you may look at and think, oh I haven't got a pillar drill say, you can do everything I do with basic tools, it's just the only reason I use a pillar drill is I have a permanently into shoulder and chest, it makes it really hard work for me to do it with a hand drill, but you can do all of this with hand drill, same with I may use a reciprocating saw to cut some of the metal if I need to, again that's because my shoulder's so bad, you can use a hacksaw. So the materials I will be using today are a bill hook, this one's already had the handle taken off. You can get these on eBay for I don't know, less than a tenner, less than ten quid. And they're good tall steel, they're already hardened and tanned, but as long as you keep them cool when you shape them, that will stay perfectly good. Um, I've got a, a lump of brass here for the guard, you can buy that off of eBay, I think they're about five for a piece that big. You could use steel or aluminium or anything you like. I just want to use brass on this and I think it will look really nice. Now for the deer foot, this was a gift to me from Metallic Reality, who you would know if you watch this channel enough. Um, she got four of these. Can't remember what deer it is, I'll write it down in the um, comments. But yeah, she shaped it, she dried it out and shaped it into this shape for me because they're normally straight. I've got a straight one as well which I'm going to make a nice elegant knife with. This is going to be a massive bowie knife though. Um, all the, uh, it's been dried out and the bone marrow and that has been taken out. <clears throat> so there's the handle. Should be really nice. I've wanted a deer foot knife for absolute years. I had one when I was a teenager. The only thing I do need to get is a metal collar which I've got plenty of tubes down there. And I'll explain what this part is later. Basically, if you're going to have a collar, if it doesn't have a cap on it, it could slide down. I don't want to put pins in this because there's not a lot of room to put pins in. So I'm going to try the technique you'll see here later. I'm going to bend some tabs over. Should then sit on the top and put the guard on it. And that should work fine. You're going to need basic tools, as I said, and some epoxy. And I am going to try and experiment with part here because <clears throat> depending on what shape this tang is, if it's round, the guard could spin round. So I may cut in a little slot here and here and a hole in the guard in two places so it sits into that. Um, you'll see what I mean when I come to that. So the first thing I'll be doing is shaping the blade. So I shall be cutting out that lovely blade shape, putting it onto here and cutting it out of an angle grinder while keeping it cool. I shall now put the bevel back on and maybe take it back a little bit more because it's quite a shiny bevel on this. But that is pretty much shaped I think. Looks pretty good to me. 
close enough. I'm happy with that. Does look good. It will look a bit hotter out here than it is, but as you can see, my breath is creating a lot of steam on its own, so that's not as hot as it looks. <laughs> it's very cold out here at the minute. I've shaped the blade to its basic shape. I've adjusted the tang as best as I can. These aren't the best tangs, but you know, it's what you get with these. They're inexpensive, but they are really solid you know tangs anyway even though it is like a welded tang it's still a really decent tang i've put a couple of little grooves in there for when i glue this in i may need to still adjust all of this anyway if it doesn't fit in the in the um the deer foot bone cavity uh the next things i need to do is take the paint off and i need to look into whether i need to cut a bit out of here so that it can slot into the guard but I don't really know about that yet, so I may do that later. But yeah, I may need to cut a little bit out on each side so I can drill a hole into the guard and then these bits will slot into it and it will stop the guard being at a twist. So the next thing I'm going to do is get the paint off and I'm going to try an experiment today. The thing with getting the paint off of these is they are really well done, so they're really difficult to get the paint off. Um, the methods I know you can use, you can sand it off, you can scrape it off with a sort of Stanley knife, utility knife type thing. You can cover them in acetone and uh, then scrape it off. I might try today putting a heat gun on it. The only thing is I just did think that actually that might um, if I make it too hot it could fuck up the temper. So um, I don't know. I'm going to experiment and have a think. But uh, yeah. Be prepared, these can be difficult to get the paint off. I might just grind it off and then sand it down. Um, that would probably be the easiest way to do it. I might just do that, grind it off. With So I've got the basic blade cut out and I've got the paint off. Now the only thing with doing that is grinding it you do get a lot of scratches so it will create a lot more work to finish the blade now but it's one of those things you've just got to go with it really. It's either take ages getting the paint off and less work afterwards or get the paint off reasonably quickly but more work so overall you're doing the same amount of work anyway um, and at least this way I can get on with it and there are things you can do if you if you do have a blade that you can't really get the scratches out of you can always blue it and that will cover it up but um, I do want this to be bare metal so this is going to require quite a bit of sanding to get this looking better than that but I'm not going to go mad with it anyway I'm not going to have a mirror finish I'm never intended to have a mirror finish on it. I want it looking quite rustic, but not like that anyway. But I can carry on working now. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to, as soon as I've got an all right bit of area to play with there, I may run a drill into this to open it up a little bit. Right, I've now got the blade to fit in the handle. Fits in quite well. It's gonna be a nice blow knife. It's not the longest tang I'd you know I'd be comfortable with, but you know, it's what fits in there. Um, 
Yeah, it should be all right. This this isn't really going to be a bloody um a user knife anyway. This is always going to be more of a fancy decorative type thing. But you know, I do want it to be a working knife, and it will be. So that's got room for the guard to go on there. I now need to make the collar for the end of the handle. Alright, so I've got a steel collar here. I won't be using all of it, but you, you can see the polished up bit that I'm going to have. So this will be going on here, like this. And I'll cut some grooves into here and bend bits over so that they'll stop it carrying on going down. I think that should work quite well. Right, so I've got the, the collar mounted on a piece of wood. I should now be able to cut down to the wood and then bend these tabs over. <clears throat> so, what I have created is a collar with a bit on the top so it won't slip further down on the handle now. I think that should work quite well. I'm going to need to adjust the hole slightly to the side. But yeah, I think that's really good actually. That's perfect. That's how I want it. And with the tabs it will not slip down anymore as you can see. I'm now going to drill the hole in the guard. I'm going to use a, I think that's about a four or five mil bit, and then I'm going to up it to the size that I need. I have had an idea <clears throat> for the guard, um, when I was talking about putting the guard on and the fact that the tang is a weird shape at the end, it may create a gap. I think what I'm actually going to do is keep some of this brass dust. I should be able to then mix that with some super glue or epoxy, fill the holes with it, and it won't really be very um, noticeable then. I think that's what I'm going to do. So the blade won't fully fit at this point because it gets slightly fatter at this end. So I'm going to get a round file and basically file a groove in either side. So it's still tight that side, but it gives it enough room. So I'm cutting at a, an angle. I don't know if you'd be able to see that or not. And I'll do that on both sides. Right, I've cut the two sort of slots in. I'm going to have to make some holes in this, in the guard, so that they will then sit into those holes and stop it moving left and right. I thought I would refine those little pins a little bit. I think that'd be better like that. It'd be easier to do. So that'll be going on like that, and then I will drill two little holes so that the guard can sit in those holes and then it will not wobble left and right so so there's the holes and the bit for the tang just make sure I've got this the right way around it fits on one way better than the other right so where is the guard basically on it's coming along now so I just need to shape the guard now Not quite there yet, but it's getting there. I am getting there. Quite liking the look of this. So it's all just sat together at the minute, none of it's glued in. But yeah, 
quite happy with that. So all I really need to do now is start cleaning the pieces up. The uh, handle doesn't really need to be touched. I need to clean up the collar a little bit because there's still a little bit of rust on there. Finish off the guard, which again is just it's just sanding everything now, and then sanding the blade as best I can. Um, we'll have to see how that turns out, and yeah, we'll see how it turns out. Right, this is where I am now. I'm getting to the stage where I can stick this together. So this will be epoxied in for now. And then at a later date, if I feel like I need a um, pin in it, I will. Quite happy with that. One thing I do need to do though, I do this every bloody time, I must buy some more um, sandpaper. I don't have enough to do a decent finish. but. In a way, it'll give it a quite a nice rustic look, which is what I want really. I want this to look quite old. Uh, so yeah, next thing you'll see me doing is mixing up the epoxy and putting it together. Okay, that side's the sharp side. Right, hopefully that should be okay. The rubber, the large rubber band should be pulling it down hard enough. I hope so anyway. I think there's enough in there. And that this stuff's good. I've never used it before. <laughs> 